Hello and welcome to Mad About Sports. Today we are going to be talking about a football sensation. He's made his name with his clinical performances in Austria, in Germany, and now in England and all across Europe. He has been a sensation because he has been started off as a wonder kid for Salzburg. Then he came to Dortmund. He made his name over there. Now he became one of the most expensive signings for City, and he's been dominating there in English Premier League. There's none other than Erling Holland. Erling Haaland has been always a sensation. The moment he made his rise from Salzburg in Champions Leagues, even moving to Dortmund, he always had an impact of that prominent striker. He's a fierce number nine because of his physicality, because of his pace, because of his ability to draw the defenders and to score goals from different angles, which makes him a striker which is very different. A lot of striker we'd see have the abilities to get in spaces, get in the right positions, but he's got a lot of traits which makes him a complete striker. He's got pace, physicality, and his off-the-ball movements, which helps his teammates to get in behind in space as well, makes him a complete player. And whichever team he has played, he's got that impact. Let's now talk about Erling Haaland's rise. Let's bring about the 1920 season when he was in Borussia Dortmund when he came for the first time. He had 33 shots which he took. He had an XT of 8.89 with 13 goals. This was a season when he made his move and first he, remember, he only played half the season after his move from Salzburg. But still, the impact was right there. One may say it's easier to move to a Bundesliga club and make an impact there, but that is not the case over here. He made his impact on the field with his off-field movements. Him linking up with Jaden Sancho, Marco Royce was something which you saw in Borussia Dortmund. And Borussia Dortmund knew this kid is special. Now, let's go to another season where he really, that was his next season. Everybody thought the first season is always a season which will fail to deceive a lot of people. But in the second season, this was one of his best seasons for Dortmund. 92 shots at an XT of 23.59 and 27 goals. This season was a season which really put him in an elite list, which caught the eye, eyeballs of a lot of European clubs. This is when Howling Haaland came into discussion. Can he be the next big thing in European football? If you look at his shots... You can say most of his shots are inside the box. And that is the thing about Erling Haaland. He gets into position and he can score. The moment he gets a good ball in, he can score. He's, he's, a, he's a fantastic finisher. He'll get inside the box and he'll score. He's not like one of the strikers. He'll give you, balls, uh, give you goals outside the box. But at the same time, once he's in the box, from different angles, he can give you a goal. That's the best thing. You give him the best delivery and he can give you the goals. So that's what makes Erling Haaland a prominent player. And 2020-2021 season, a COVID-affected season, as many would like to say. But that was a season which made him into that recognition. Now, let's go to this season. This season, if you say he had a lot of injuries, 2021-2022 season, which just got over last season. He had injuries. He had his fair share of injuries. But then still, yet again... The, the amount of time he spent on the pitch, the amount of time he had his impact on the game. In that season, his XD was 17.03. One of the best XDs in Bundesliga at that time. And not just that, 80 shots, 22 goals. Look at him. Yet again, getting inside the box, making sure that he's staying free. And remember, him missing out missing out on Jalen Sancho was one of the things about this season. The question marks were on him. Can he... Can he actually be the kind of player without Jalen Sancho? There were a lot of times when Jalen Sancho and Erling Haaland used to link up and that really helped Erling Haaland's moments. And also Jalen Sancho to get wider in spaces and to give him the right balls. But this was a season which again proved he does not need a player who is actually helping him a lot. He can get into right spaces, give him the right delivery, he's going to finish it. And not just that, this season, he also helped Dortmund fair bit in Champions League as well. Not, not, not that Dortmund had a very successful journey in Champions League. But this is a season which clearly showed all the European clubs that he's a player to sign for. He was linked up with United. He was linked up with City. And finally, where he ended up in. But yeah, he was linked up with Barcelona as well at some stage. Everyone knows he's the next big thing. And of course, even Real Madrid are in the chase. Real Madrid knew the moment they couldn't get Mbappe, they should go for an Erling Haaland. But not the thing that he ended up there. Now let's bring about Manchester City. Let's talk about this season. The season has just begun, right? It's not even... How one one half into the season, one fourth of the season has probably completed at this point. What has really changed it? Let's talk about it. Bring it from a city perspective. What has really changed for Manchester City? You know, with City in the last season, their build-up was three to four while in on, on offense. You had Cancelo and Walker and and maybe Ruben Diaz, you know, from the back. And you had Cancelo even actually cutting in at the front in the middle. Cancelo used to drop in. Uh, in, in the in the two there, but this season what you're seeing is Kyle Walker, who used to play as a third defender in the build-up, 
is now forward. He's playing in the midfield during the build-up, which you have seen during maybe when Kun Aguero was there as well. You had your right back moving into the midfield and playing in that uh, in a build-up of two, three, four. That's something which is which which uh, Pep has incorporated with Holland in the team. And you know, four in plays in wide, which also enables Bernardo and Kevin De Bruyne to move, make in, uh, make chances in half spaces, which you are seeing more prominent with City in this season. And what has helped Harlan? The movements of Kevin De Bruyne and the movements of Bernardo Silva to get in behind spaces and to give him the chances. What Haaland has done, not just, just keep the goals aside for a minute. Let's just keep goals aside. Because his record in all competitions is 22 goals in 15 games. It's a crazy stat to have. This is just Bundesliga. There were definite question marks on Erling Haaland moving to City. And can he actually get over the Bundesliga tax? But boy, didn't he get over the Bundesliga tax in some fashion. He has come. He has made the right choices. He has made the right decision-making to come to City. He knew that he will be having support of players like Kevin De Bruyne, Bernardo Silva. And that has really helped Haaland to you know, make those runs. And let's talk about his in-behind movements. We know how serious a poacher, how serious a striker he is. But his in-behind movements has really helped helped the team in a big cause because he has been drawing defenders, which has helped Kevin De Bruyne to run in spaces. You know, even Foden to cut into spaces. So, which means the defenders are drawn towards him and all what he has to do is to get into that space. And the moment he gets into space and once, you know, De Bruyne gets that exact ball into him, he's able to score with precision. I'll now talk about that goal which he scored, scored against his former club. Manchester City were 1-0 down. They knew what had to be done. That ball which Cancelo put to Haaland in that particular match. There was not a lot of strikers can score from that angle. Let's talk about the goal which he scored against United, where Varane thought he had Holland covered. But he can run in spaces because of his physical ability to run behind and to get in different angles because he's got a long, he's a very huge man. He's 6'4, six, 6'6, six, 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 which is a very big thing for a striker and he's very quick. Because of the angles which he's able to generate inside the box, it makes him a much more vulnerable, much more threatening, uh, uh, you know, asset. For a team and where whichever team he's going to come up against, defenders are going to be vulnerable because of him. Defenders of any stage are going to be put under pressure because his movements are quick. His movements, his physicality is strong. And remember, he's got a barrage of players to help him out in that, especially with the likes of De Bruyne, uh, Foden and everyone else. Now, if you look at this stat as well, it's a very insane stat in the number of off-the-ball moments he's made. Erling Haaland's off-the-ball runs have been one of the best for City. Last season, you saw City still managed to win the Premier League, went on to be in the Champions League semi-final without a number nine. One might say, what is the use of a number nine in City? You know, with Pep Guardiola, he has never really liked the conventional number nine. It takes me back to Pep Guardiola's days in Barcelona. When he came to Barcelona, he told Samuel Leto, you have to play on the, on the wings. You saw that with Gabriel Jesus last season. Gabriel Jesus is deployed as a number nine for Arsenal this particular season. But for City, he used to play on the on the wider region. He used to play on the right wing or the left wing. But this is the first time after Aguero, I'm seeing Pep Guardiola really entrusting on a number nine. Maybe you can say David Villa at times. David Villa was a player which Pep also entrusted in playing a number nine position. But here he is. Erling Haaland is one player who Pep really trusts to play in number nine position. He really had to amend the system a tad bit. But it's really worked for City's people. But now... What has Pep Guardiola said about Erling Haaland? Because you know Pep Guardiola has worked with some of the best players across the world. Messi's, your Chavis, your even I would say even Kun Aguero out there. He's worked with some of the best. Pep Guardiola says he's one of the best players he's ever seen. And that's one of the reasons which really helps him. He's the first one to ever arrive in the training, last one to leave. What is that mentality talking about this player? We have heard that about one of the greatest of all times in Cristiano Ronaldo. He's using the same mentality. Mentality really matters in a football plan. His mentality is work ethic. Has been one of the most prolific things about Erling Haaland as well. And statistically speaking, he could possibly end up scoring 50 goals this season or even more. Now, the question is can he be the pivotal factor in leading City to the maiden ever Champions League? He well could be. Because last year, you saw in the Champions League semi final, City had close to five opportunities against Real Madrid on one on one chances, which they really bottled it. Now, this season, having Erling Haaland up there, up top, because last season, remember, Real Madrid did play as a false nine in one of those games as well. So he missed quite a few chances. Now, here you have a prominent striker 
who is very little in finishing. And City will be really hoping. The number of chances he gets, he really puts it behind the net and will help City in their run to the Champions League. And City will be really hoping this is a season because in City's project, this is a peak moment for City. They've been scoring goals. They've been working as a unit. They're a complete machine. Even with Erling Haaland, they are a very good team. But with Erling Haaland, it makes them an even more threatening game. He was a final piece in City's entire system. And this time around, Erling Haaland has really come up on top and he'll be really hoping he continues this run of form throughout the end of the season. Thank you for watching. For more of this analysis, follow Madabot Sports on Instagram because that's where we bring our tactical analysis, static posts. And also subscribe to our channel on YouTube. And I'm sure that we'll bring you with all of this analysis and keep you entertained. Have a good day.